Hello, this is the fifth tutorial in this series and today we're going to learn how to build a, a sliding doors to the exterior, to the balcony. We're going to build a basic balcony with railing outside, glass railing, and we're going to fix the thickness of the windows, a thing which I forgot to do in the previous window tutorial, so I'm sorry. And let's get started. Let's start with the windows. The window thickness, as you can see in the top viewport, let me just unselect the region, fine. The thickness of the window is very, very thin. If I uh, put the plan back, unhide the plan, you can see that the window, the yellow lines represent the window, is much, thin, uh, much uh, thicker than the window which we created. That's because I didn't take into account the thickness of the window when I was building it. Uh, because I need to change the thickness in the plan itself. So now let's change the thickness. The first thing I want to change is the thickness of the frame. So I'm going to choose the whole window, uh, editable poly, and I'm going to choose elements. Now I'm going to choose the elements of the frame only. I'm going to detach them. Now I'm going to choose the frame and make it wider. I'm going to make it bigger on the X axis to fit just about fit the yellow lines that represent the window in the plan. So something like this is fine. Now our frame is thick enough. Now we need to adjust the windows. I'm going to delete one of them one of the windows because I'm going to duplicate it this one to this side again after I make it thicker and now I'm going to choose this window this window frame and this glass and I'm going to detach it now we have a frame with glass I'm going to make the frame with glass thicker move it on just about here make it thicker something like this so it would be proportionate to the window itself maybe just a little bit more something like this all right as you can see the yellow line here and here represents the first window so I'm going to make it something like this big yay big Alright, now we have the window and the frame thickness right. I'm going to move this opening device backwards. I can't see the gizmo of the opening device and that's because the gizmo is up here. Because when I detached the whole window and left only this, uh, the gizmo that was left with it is the gizmo from the whole window. To center the gizmo to the object, what I do is go to here hierarchy effect pivot only and center to object and deselect the effect pivot only now the pivot is centered to the object I'm using I'm going to take it back so it touches the window like so and I'm going to copy this shift drag it here let's hide the plan now I'm going to choose the window I just copied and move it backwards on the other rail. As you can see we have two rails here. I'm going to put it on the backwards rail. Let's see this in the perspective viewport. I'm going to move the window till it touches the window. Again I want to center the gizmo to the window so effect pivot only center. I'm going to move it till it touches the window like so. And I'm going to copy this object here the other side. Shift drag here. Perspective viewport. I'm going to move it backwards a little bit like so. Alright, after we fix the thickness of the window we're going to combine all of the elements to one editable poly again. So I'm going to do attach, attach this window, attach this window, attach this opening device and this opening device. Now if I move them all together, 
I can see that they're attached to one another. Alright, so we have a thick window. If I render this window now, let's render only a window, I would see that the thickness is much much better than it was before. It has depth now. So this is great, the window is fixed. I'm going to delete this one and copy this one to the other one. Alright, so we have two windows now. We want to create a, a sliding door here that is in the same family of uh, modeling as this window. So I'm going to copy this window. I'm going to shift rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to put it at the opening, the top viewport. Just like this. I'm going to make it much much bigger to fit the opening. I'm going to move this center to the center. Almost the center. And in the front viewport I'm going to make it big enough to touch the floor. So something like this. Alright. Now I can see that what I did is take this window and just copy it and scale it up to fit this opening. Now if I look at this, I need to make the bottom, uh, bottom sliding uh, lines almost same height as the floor because if I don't I'm gonna just bump, bump it with my legs so let's make it almost touch the floor that's fine. Now the opening handles need to be at a height that I can open it with my hands so I'm going to choose this one and this one I'm going to take them down to about 1 meter and 10 centimeters this line represents 1 meter and 10 centimeters if you remember the first tutorial we built this line to represent the bottom of the window and the bottom of the window was 1 meter and 10 centimeters so if I center it the opening a mechanism to the center of this line this would be at 1 meter 10 centimeters alright so now I have a balcony opening with a door glass sliding door uh, let me just check if in the plan there were two separators not three you can not see in the plan if it's two doors or three doors here so what we're going to do is measure this. If I take a box and build it and I will measure uh, the width of each door I will get one meter and four centimeters. This door is a little bit too big. If I measure the whole opening it's two meters. So if I make three doors let me open the calculator two meters divided by three doors each door will be 66 centimeters which is fine it's not too small and not too big but one meter you know what let's leave the doors as is because there are doors in existence that are meter uh, width so let's leave it at that I'm going to open just a little bit one of the doors I'm going to deselect this opening mechanism and I'm going to select this door this door and just slide them to the right a little bit so that the balcony door will be a little bit open all right now we have in the scene two windows one sliding door that goes to the balcony let's try rendering out only the balcony sliding door region and see if everything with the colors and everything else is fine here As you can see, the metal is a little bit dotted. There are many, many dots here. This is because the subdivision of the reflection is not high enough. 
uh, so we're gonna fix this in a minute you can see the light goes through here but in the uh, areas where we have glass no sunlight goes through to fix this I'm going to go to the glass material and change one parameter it's not a big deal I'm gonna show you in a second so this is fine we have aluminium uh, frames and glass doors now to fix the light issue that we have here that the sunlight doesn't shine through what we need to do is go into the glass material which is if I'm not mistaken here here we go the glass material in order to be sure I'm going to material select by material no I'm sorry material pick from object and I'm going to pick from this object so this hierarchy of materials is all the materials we have in this sliding door and in these windows now let's choose the glass and make a new instance out of it and what we need to change in order to the sunlight to go through the glass is this effect shadows when you don't click this all the shadows that shine through affected by the sun don't shine through the glass so I need to click this and if I render it now you can see that the sun, direct sunlight does shine through the glass and make uh, the sun effect on the floor which is how it behaves in real life you can see the sunlight shining through here and through the windows this is great alright let's fix the dottiness here let's go inside the aluminium material which is this one brushed aluminium which we created in the previous tutorial and we can see the subdivision set to 16 it's not low but as you can see it's not enough so let's up it to 32 and try rendering just a small small region of the aluminium so let's put it here and try rendering it as you can see it's better this area here is much better than this dotted area here this is because we have 32 subdivisions in the reflection of the aluminium now if this is not enough and you still have dottiness in your rendering after you up this to 32 don't keep up in it more than 32 because more than 32 will just eat up your uh, systems uh, memory and uh, this is not the good solution uh, what we, you need to do if you have too many dots in the scene is go to rendering setup settings and noise threshold down this value uh, the template of this value is 0.01 what you need to do is down it to 0.05 then the dotiness in the scene is supposed to disappear if you still still have dotiness down this at just a little bit more to 0.003 but no less than 0.002 <coughs> now I should mention that uh, when you change this value and go down with this value the rendering times are dramatically uh, uh, more uh, longer uh, than they are when you stick with the 0.01 value so the best course of action is to change the subdivision of the shadows here on the reflection to 32 and only then when you have too much dotiness and too much dots in your scene uh, down this value so don't make this value any smaller unless you have to because the rendering time will jump dramatically all right so now after we created this door a glass sliding door and we created the windows let's create the balcony I'm not going to use the plan for this because we have no balcony in the plan I'm just working uh, from my imagination uh, if you have a complete plan with a balcony build it from the plan I'm going to build it from uh, my imagination so I'm going to create a plane that represents the floor of the balcony I'm going to make the balcony something like 3 meters 3 meters over 2 meters no over 150 so one meter and a half over three meters 
this is going to be my balcony it's a very small balcony for a bedroom so it's supposed to be small just to see the view now I'm going to move this using the snap toggle tool I'm going to move it on the y-axis only to snap to this grid which is the exterior point of my uh, door now I'm going to go to the front viewport and align it exactly to the floor I'm going to take it on the y-axis and snap it here now I'm going to deselect the snap toggle in the camera you can see the floor of my balcony which is good now I'm going to build the railing for this balcony opening in order to do this I will build a box here we'll use the snap toggle tool and build a box here to here I will give it a height of 20 centimeters and a length which is the thickness of 20 also I'm going to move this on the y-axis to touch this you know what not 20 length 10 length is fine now why am I doing this this thing maybe 15 centimeters represents the concrete that the railing sits on a rail uh, rarely sits on the level of the floor uh, it sits on some kind of concrete uh, box uh, that is maybe 15 or 10 centimeters from the floor so let's make it 10 less visible I'm going to convert it to edit poly I'm going to take this polygon and this polygon extrude them by 10 so this is a uh, box right okay now I'm going to choose this polygon and this polygon and I'm going to extrude them it doesn't matter which, which length I'm going to take them on the Y axis and snap them here so now if we look at the balcony we have a floor and a concrete railing of 15 centimeters alright next step is building the glass railing I'm going to create for this purpose a line in about the center I'm going to snap to, uh, disable the snap toggle tool I'm going to build a line here one with a, holding the shift the line goes 90 degrees it doesn't go like this it goes only on straight lines so I'm holding the shift click again and again now we have a line going through the concrete I'm going to up it here and I'm going to render it with enable render and enable in viewport and now I'm going to uh, use the rectangular shape uh, the height of this glass railing is about one meter so I'm going to make the length 100 centimeters I'm going to take it up so it touches the ground like so and we have our glass railing as you can see here now the next thing I want to do is create the aluminium railing on top of this so I'm going to copy it shift drag up I'm going to give it a, a radial option I'm going to make the radial option thickness more thick maybe two centimeters and the glass here needs to be much much thinner so the glass is something like 0.5 like this I'm going to take this railing handle and put it on top here front viewport and the left viewport maybe yeah here we go place it up here alright so now we have the glass railing we have the concrete on the, the bottom here and we have the aluminium on the top here so the glass let's give it a glass material just like the windows the concrete will be white just like the walls and this thing on top here we're gonna give it a chrome material so let's call it chrome change this to V-Ray material 
and let's give it a color of almost white not that it matters because I'm going to give it a very very strong reflective color almost 200 245 is fine now as you can see it's very very reflective very chrome like uh, but it's too mirror like so I'm going to down the reflection value to 0.98 so that it's not as sharply reflective as a mirror maybe 0.95 is better a little bit blurred out to get the chrome effect and the subdivision let's put it at 16 not too much because the reflection is not very very blurred like the reflection of the aluminium here uh, you don't need to make this subdivision value very high because uh, it won't make noises or dots like this does uh, in short when you down this value you need to up this value but not over 32 because your computer will choke so this is a chrome material let's give it chrome material to this line and let's choose one two three and group them to rail let's try rendering this area here same area We didn't give a material to the ground as you can see, so we'll have strange results in the ground. But the aluminium rail seems fine. Let's stop it here. Alright, the material I'm going to give the floor here is the same material as the room. So what I'm going to do is take the floor and attach this floor to the floor I already got and the UVW map would take care of both of them so now we have a floor and an exterior floor that flows one to another let's try rendering now now we have this white spot here at the exterior what this is let me stop it for a second this white spot here that doesn't exist here is essentially let me show you is essentially the HDRI map we have in the environment dome so if you remember from the second uh, tutorial I applied a, a V-Ray HDRI map to the environment now uh, if I don't click the invisible button what was going I'm going to see the white environment in the rendering so this is going to manifest like this and the white here. I don't want to see this because I'm going to put a background plane uh, in the windows so what I'm going to do is click the invisible button. Now if I'm here already I can see the subdivision of the shadows from the HDRI map is very very low it's on 8 so this can cause the dots we talked about before so I'm going to up the subdivision to 16 and the HDRI map resolution is very very low so I'm going to up it to 124 now this is supposed to give me a little bit better results and less dots like you see here alright let's try rendering this as you can see no white uh, strange reflections in the windows if I render this part you will see this will be black too the black will be replaced with a with a plane with a picture of a view or sea or whatever now let's see that the ground is fine and the aluminium here is okay and the chrome here is fine but this needs to be a little bit thicker this is very thin and there are a little dottiness on the reflection of the floor so I'm going to up the subdivision of the reflection uh, of the parquet floor too this looks fine alright I'm going to stop this now and let's look at these reflections this reflection 
is a little bit dotted so I'm going to try to render only one small area here and see if the dots remain alright let's check out the material of the parquet floor which is this one wood floor we're going to go to the reflection and we will see the subdivision of the reflection is 8 it's very low that's why we have the dots on the reflection on the floor so I'm going to up this to 32 which is very very high and see the difference I hope you can see the difference in the YouTube video I'm not sure but there is a huge difference now if I deselect the region you can see that this is before and this is after this is much much cleaner shaders and the 32 subdivision value is much better for this floor it will be a little bit uh, longer on rendering time but it's worth it so let's render the room as is and we're finished in this tutorial the next tutorial I will show you how to put a plane in order to fill the background of the image uh, something like a sea a picture at the background or maybe city or something like that so enjoy the final results and I will see you in the next tutorial